Howdy, gents. Give me one second to get this up and in the cradle. That's good. All right, let's see. Are we centered? Uh, I feel like we're sort of centered, at least if this thing wasn't waving around. Eh, good enough, right? Hey, if you like this stuff, hit like and subscribe. Um, lets me know to keep doing it. So uh, what are we looking at today? Well, we're going to look at two knives. Uh, you know, I go through phases, right? I, I, there's, I do it with bikes, I do it with cars. I was in a truck phase forever, then I'm not in the sports cars, motorcycles. If anybody that knows me knows I can't keep a bike long, I'm on my 34th bike in, I don't know, 16 years. So I'm averaging two a year. Same thing with guns, same thing with knives. You know, sometimes I'm in a revolver mood. Lately, I've been carrying a Kimber Solo 9mm. And then other days, I'm like, you know what? A little uh, a little uh, LCP Max with a, with a front night sight and uh, 12 plus one rounds, a 380, you know. That's good enough. Yeah. And I do the same with knives. You know, sometimes I'm carrying more of the spider codes and out OTFs and things. And then other times I'll sit here and, you know, I'll do something more traditional. You know, whether it be a slip joint, whether it be a new meets traditional where you've got your, uh, your, your new meets old, where you've got the latest in technology and manufacturing processes and materials, but in a classic, you know, design. That's my Jack Wolf uh, gunfighter. I think it's the gunfighter. Eh, whatever. It's an awesome knife. That's all that matters. So um, the first knife that we're going to look at is going to be Queen. And this one I went over today. I actually went over to look at this, but then I was looking at another one um, that was a Boker Copperhead. And it was just a little too small. So I went over to uh, uh, Old Town Cutlery. I'll put a link. Um, great shop. Went over there, talked to Rusty, and was like, yeah, I'm looking for this and that. And he suggested this. And um, it was one that I bought, you know, a couple Queens from them uh, the other day, one for my father-in-law and one for my wife. And I saw they had a trapper design. I was like, I, I want to take a look at that. This one, I normally they have this in stock. They didn't. Um, so I just, I just, that one I just happened to buy uh, on Amazon. We'll go into that one in a second. But the first one I did get over at Old Town Cutlery. Awesome shop. Great people. Um, always fun to go over there and see what's new and exciting. And more often than not, I end up coming back with uh, something in my pocket and a little bit lighter wallet. So I picked up the Queen Big Boy Trapper uh, in Redbone. Only 72 bucks. Now, the Queen name is not the old Queen, <laughs> giggity, um, that, um, you know, was U.S. made. The brand has been bought out, and I'm told that it's made by these guys, Rough Rider, and it's made in China. I don't have a problem with that. Rough Rider makes fantastic value knives. Yeah, I like this particular case that's U.S. made. Not a lot of cases, but this one's an excellent example of one. I like my Victorinox. I got uh, two different uh, GECs uh, here, Great Eastern Cutleries. And then I got my Rough Riders. So let's take a look and see how it compares. So comes in a nice little case, sort of like felt lined. It is a big boy. This thing weighs, I think, five, almost six ounces. So this, this is not a light knife. There is a lot of heft to this. However, that being said, it's it's very nice. It's it's I played with it a little bit there. Um, I like that the transitions are good. The uh, the the red bone has a really really took the die nice. I've got no proud pins or anything like that sticking out that are catching on anything. Um, it's a really nice knife so far. So what is it? Well, it is using I believe D two steel, which I don't have a problem with. D2 is a decent steel. Um, comes on a lot of knives this, these days. It's actually, if you look at the properties of it, it's not far off from some of the more premium steels when you look at hardness, um, toughness, um, resistance to uh, corrosion and things like that. You know, you think, oh, M390 blows it out of the water. In a lot of ways, it's not really that much better. Certainly not enough to justify, you know, quadruple the cost. That being said, really nicely put together. The springs are good. The brass spacers look good. Hardly any blade wobble. Spring action, nice, not overly snappy, but that's the thing. You know, if you get one that's like really snappy and fast, typically it's because it's got a bunch of wobble. I'd rather have one that's a little bit less snappy, a little less walk and talk, 
but will you know maybe break in and smooth out a little bit over time because it's tighter here and doesn't have that blade wobble. Because you know if you start off with a lot of excessive blade wobble right out of the gate, it's only going to get worse as the knife gets used over the years. So what have we got? We've got a three and a half inch blade with a full three inch cutting edge. So that's a pretty big blade. The handle's nice and big and thick. It's contoured nicely. So for someone with my size hands, I can really get a good grip on that. And that feels really good. You know, if I compare it to the smaller one here, the case, which I got rid of all my other cases. Well, it was a couple that were okay. Uh, giving away his gifts, but this one is like an excellent example of what a case should be. Unfortunately, it is the exception rather than the norm. Looks very similar, but there's a big difference in size and heft, thickness, girth, everything. This thing is really nicely done. This is nice too. I mean, it sits in your hand really well. Um, this one I got from Great East, or no, I got this one from uh, Old Town Cutlery rather. Um, this one turned out really good. But this thing is just at a whole nother level. This is going to feel, you're going to feel this in your pocket. This one, you know, it's got some heft to it, but this one's probably a little bit more EDC friendly. But if you don't mind a bigger, kind of big honk and knife where you feel like you could get some more work done or put it through a little bit more uh, abuse, if you will, that feels pretty good so far. So you got that blade, which is your typical drop-ish point. It's not a spear point, more of a drop point. And then you've got your spay blade which again, big blade, um, sharp-ish at the tip, but not super sharp, much sharper back here. Do a quick sharpness test on both of these blades. Sharp enough, up towards the tip. It is still cut up there. This, I don't, a lot, of, a lot of knives up towards the tip on the spay blades, they tend to get more of a wedge and not razor sharp out there. And that's because the purpose of this is for slicing, but you don't want to poke a hole in something. It's almost like having a safety point. So if you want to do slicing work, but not piercing, you use the spay blade. Go back to the other blade. Yeah, plenty sharp out of the box. I'll typically strop them just to you know, remove any burrs and make sure that everything is straight and all that. But it's uh, definitely sharp enough out of the box. Okay, overall length, eight, eight inches. I hear that's a good length. So, um, I mean, I've never heard it personally, but I've heard other people say that. So... Um, just has the model number. That's the QN7555. It doesn't have the steel stamped on it, but it did say, I'll have to look up the specs online, but I believe it was D2 when I looked at their website. Um, they also had one that was the brown bone where the jigging kind of had grooves going this way. The red one, I, I always, this is why I kept this case because it was just such a beautiful knife, but also, you know, it was well done. It was well put together and, and well executed. But I also just love that red bone. Um, I went with this one. I felt it looked a little nicer and it felt a little better. And I went through them and got the one with the least blade wobble or that seemed, you know, the nice tightest fit. I will say there's a little bit of stiction here. Nothing that a little drop of oil in there later won't fix. But I'd rather have that than have a blade that's all loosey-goosey. You know, how would I compare it to, you know, a GEC? Well, GEC is going to be a 10 times better knife. But these knives are, you know, are what? 160, 180, 190, I don't know, something in that range versus 71. Um, they're also a lot bigger. I haven't seen one. This is the biggest GEC I've had personally. Um, do love them. Very, very nice knives. So I'm told that this is made by the same company that makes Rough Riders and Rough Rider Reserves. And honestly, I would believe that. I mean, it it the fit and finish on it is as, is as good as what you, you come to expect from Rough Rider Reserve. Um, Rough Rider Reserve makes a great knife. So let's get the uh, Victorinox off. Yeah, we can keep that one out. But we're gonna be focusing here now. I'm gonna switch away from this, although we'll come back to it. And we're gonna talk about the Rough Rider Reserve. So I am a massive fan of these. They do a good job. There's a lot of value in these knives. Yes, they're made in China. We've had this discussion before. If you don't like China, then don't buy a Chinese knife. I happen to like a lot of them because they're a good value. You can buy quality knives made in the U.S. You pay through the nose. What you can't find in the U.S. is a value knife. There are no good knives that are 50 bucks in the U.S. 
none. The ones that you'll get are going to be closer to 70, and they're going to be really, really hit or miss. For every one good one, there's going to be 20 absolute crap ones with poor fit and finish, cracked scales, proud pins, misaligned um, scales, so there's like horrible transitions and catches on your skin, awful blade wobble, blade rubbing. It's unusual these days. Now, vintage case is a different story, but it's unusual to find a U.S.-made case today that's in that $60, $70 price range that is good. I got one of the few ones. So this one is the Whitler, large Whitler, um, center swell in blue Macarta, blue denim Macarta. Absolutely beautiful out of the box. Polished nice. The back spacers, I mean, look how well polished that is. That is a really well done, nicely polished. The transitions, the pins, the shield, you can't even feel the damn things. Um, you, you can feel the ribbing there, but you can't feel the transitions. That is awesome. So what is this one? This is a big kind of spear point blade. Feels good in the hand. That swell, it looks sharp, like it's a hard angle. It's not. I mean, it fits right into that swell of your hand. Really nice there. That feels very, very good. Um, and then it's got two other blades. You've got kind of a utility knife blade. And then you've got a pen knife blade. So let's go ahead and close this big one. I will say the big blade has a really strong spring. You know why? Because it's a big fat blade and it's spanning both. So you're getting the spring tension of two on there, which takes more pressure to open. But honestly, I'm okay with that because when you're using it, it's that much less likely to, to close on and stuff like that. It's a really good lockup. This little guy here, very nice point. I feel like the edge is just a tiny bit off on that. I'll strop it and tune that up. It's sharp, but it was snagging a little bit. So whether there's just a burr on there that was catching, let's switch over to the pen blade. Yeah, that's probably the first Rough Rider Reserve I've ever owned that wasn't hair popping sharp out of the box. That one needs a little bit of a tune-up. We'll strop that. I can feel the edge is rolled just a little bit that way. It's just a little bit uneven. So we'll straighten that. That's easy enough to do. Let's see how the big blade is. Yeah, that definitely takes more to open it. But man, that spring lockup is tight. I'd be much less concerned using this about it closing on my hand. Oh, beautiful. So that blade, that just glides through. So for whatever reason, this big blade is exactly what I would typically expect. That is razor sharp. Really nice edge, just glides through, barely touching it. The other ones, I'm going to strop them real quick. Let's do a little size comparison. What model is this? This is the, oh, let's see, it is a D2 steel, and it is the RRR003BM, I think, for Blue Macarta. That big old blade is three and a quarter and the cutting edge is about two and three quarters. So a little bit smaller, I mean, for a size comparison. Let's throw this big boy up here. Overall, it's almost as big, but it's a lot thinner in every other dimension. So this is notably lighter than this big guy. There is some reassuring heft to that, I'm not gonna lie. So we got a three and a quarter with a two and three quarter inch cutting edge. And then if we look at these blades, they should be a bit shorter, so we're looking at a two inch blade with a one and seven eighths cutting inch uh, on that, which is fine because that's just more of a little utility blade. Man, that is smooth action out of the box. And then your pen blade is uh, two and a half with a two and a quarter uh, cutting edge. Nice, good size, generous size for the cut it for the uh, pen knife. Um, it just needs, yeah, you can feel it's definitely catching more this way, so that edge is just a little. That's okay, we can fix that in about 60 seconds. But that big blade is nice and sharp. Um, no real blade rubbing. They do a really good job assembling these things. Um, I need to check and see, I don't see any dings in the blade from blade wrap, which can happen 
when you've got that spring housing right there that kind of bumps up. Um, and when you got really strong springs, it can slam the blade down and it almost lets the blade, if it's a heavy blade, over travel and it goes nink and it just kisses that steel spring in there and gives you a little ding. Now I've had that on $150 um, Bokers, Solingen German made. So that's not a necessarily just a cheap knife thing. But if I close that, let it snap a few times. It doesn't seem to be touching it, so that's good. And on the other knives that it has happened, on the cases and stuff, they're like, well, you've, you'll eventually sharpen it because um, you're going to have to fix that nick. And then once you've removed enough material, then it doesn't hit it anymore. And that to me is always, I'm like, that's not a solution. That's, that's a solution. That's a poor solution to a problem that should not exist. Oh, that's why. There's a blade. There's a, there's a stop pin down there. See that pin? That pin smacks into this and keeps it from doing that. That I like. If you look in here, as much as I like this case, there's a piece of leather down in there that I had to put down in there to cover that spring so that this blade goes smack and smacks against that. Because I'd close the blade two or three times and I'm like, damn it, there's a nick in the blade. I'm like, how do I keep getting a nick in the blade? And then I realized what was happening only on this blade, not on the uh, spade blade. It's never happened there. So I, I, I put some leather anyway just to have something there um, in case, but it's never hit. What they're doing here, not on this one, but that one doesn't seem to be getting any nicks, is they put a blade stop because this does have really snappy action and I have a feeling that that spring tension would absolutely uh, be causing that. So anyway, yeah, I'm just gonna put a drop or two of oil in there. Um, feels good, we're gonna tune up that edge just a little bit. <clears throat> not gonna lie, I'm a little disappointed that those edges weren't quite as sharp as I've had um, Rough Rider Reserves um, in the past. But the fit and finish on it, beautiful. Really nicely done. I've got one of their little Barlows here. Beautiful, sweet action. Really nice grinds. Again, really put together. You don't even see the pin in the, in the bolsters. Uh, I've got their Tear Jerk, uh, which has a kind of like a modified Barlow, really. It's a two-blade Barlow almost, where you've got that big uh, blade, and then you've got the uh, Warncliffe style or Sheep's Foot kind of utility knife. Have not had any problem uh, with either of these with blade wrap. And you know what is interesting? Again, look inside here. This is where the details are different. That even when you look inside, like a GEC should be, let's see, should be pretty polished. See how it's nice down in there in those grooves? Let's open this blade up a little bit. See where they polish the inside? It's very shiny. They took the time before they assembled it to polish all the internal parts and then assemble it. When you look at the case knife, this one's not too bad. But some of the bucks and some of the other ones, they're kind of rough in there. Not with these guys. I mean, they put that together. They polish the inside. Everything's nice and smooth. It's clean. Also, notice pins, uh, blade stops. So that's why this one also gets no blade wrap. You don't have to worry about it over traveling and hitting and connecting with that steel inside and nicking up your blade. Just beautifully done. This is like a micarta. You almost can't see it. It's so black, you don't see the weave. I've got one of their Aptas, which is a 30 bucks. Canvas micarta, VG10 steel. <laughs> nice snappy action. Again, no blade wrap. Really good walk and talk. And you can adjust the pivot so you can get it just where you want it and eliminate any blade play. I like Rough Rider Reserve a lot. I love my GECs. You pick these up, they feel special. You know you've got a real piece of craftsmanship here. Are they as good? No, they're not. They're just not. However, they're good enough for most people. These to me feel on par with like a Victorinox. Victorinox makes a great knife. Um, this feels really good. We'll see how it holds up over time, but I've got no blade play. It feels like a great little knife. I'm very impressed with it so far. So there you have it. The Center Swell Whittler, which gives you three different blades for three different purposes. You know, sometimes you just need a little pen knife. You got to open something. Other times you're doing some bigger cutting chores. Then other times you're just having to cut a decal or do something and you just want that nice little point and use it as a, as a utility knife. Um, it also gives you redundancy. If you dull a blade or break a blade or something like that where you're using it and you don't have access to one of your other knives, um, you know, you got a backup, a couple blades right there on the knife. 
That's why I actually like the trappers. I like that. I like multi-blade knives. You got different cutting purposes. Um, so you got different blades that are designed for those types of purposes. And then you've also got, you know, redundancy. Yeah, then you got more blades to sharpen, but you know, whatever. You don't have to carry around multiple knives. You have multiple knives here. You'd have to break the whole damn thing for both blades to be, you could snap one blade off doing something really stupid with it that you shouldn't be doing. But in an emergency situation, you do what you gotta do. And you're like, okay, well that blade snapped, but I still got this blade. I've still got the same knife. I didn't have to carry a second knife around with me. And so that's why I do like these. But man, this thing's a beast. I don't know how often I'll actually carry this one. This one may just sit in the drawer with the collection just because I don't have any other queens. Never had a queen before. Shut up, Cameron. Um, but it is a nice knife that feels really good in the hand. That's a really nice, good shape and a really nice size blade for, for cutting and doing all kinds of stuff. Anything from opening boxes to food prep and things like that. And then you got that big safety blade that's got some belly to it so you can do some nice cuts. Skinning game, whatever. I mean, that's, I guess, what a trapper blade was for. So there you have it. Get all these other guys. These are the stars of the show. This one I got off Amazon. I'll throw a link. And this one um, I got from Old Town Cutlery. So give them a look. Their website's really nice. They, I order a knife and like the next day it ships out. Um, or I just go over and pick it up. But they're real fast and prompt. And these guys know not. You can call over there and talk to somebody. And they'll help you out. They're, they're a mom and pop shop. Um, and they, they have quite a selection. So I'm, I've been very impressed with them. Anyway, that's all we've got. I think we ran a little long here, but uh, we had two knives. So if I try to do 10, 12 minute reviews, two knives, two times that is 22 minutes, which is right where we're ending up. So hope you enjoyed and uh, we'll talk to you guys later.